What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding. Yesterday was my birthday, which I did a leg day on. I really wanna thank you a whole lot for the incredible support on the website, getting all this clothing for a good discount, which unfortunately now is over, but thank you very much for the golden support. And right now, it is time for the chest. In 100% fit gym, right here in the Netherlands. So the first movement will be a chest press using the ATX plates, which are very thin, allowing me to do a lot of weight on each side. So let's start with warm up first, warm up lightly. And this exercise will contain the most warm up sets because nothing is warm right now, which is why I'm also wearing this hoodie. While it's not really cold, it's purely to warm up and to get a much better pump. Anyway, let's get started. plate right here very thin so normally we would have 20 kilo bumper plates which are very wide which wouldn't allow me to do a lot of weight here and this chest press is relatively easy to do you don't want to be limited mentally by okay uh, I can't really do much more weight on here I have to use bands or something using proper heavy ATX plates like this calibrated weightlifting plates in my opinion is the best way to go for exercises like this of motion here especially in the stretch part is very important used to in my older videos I used to contract really hard here but the problem then is that your uh, shoulders will, will not be retracted anymore and it's not safe for your front delt so focus on the stretch go as far as far as you can squeeze the chest like that but not like this because then the form is impaired which could result in injuries which sets you back much further than you want. So as I mentioned at the beginning, you can do this exercise quite heavy. Right now there is 115 kilos on each side, which is very heavy. But because of the leverage of these handles, the weight itself is feeling quite light. So, but always look out for the amount of weight you use because incorrect form here can result in something you don't want. So for example, if you go way back further, too far, you could get too much of a stretch, too much tension there, and that usually results in a tear that is a nightmare for bodybuilders. So we are warming up here properly, doing 10 reps, 8 reps, 6 reps, now probably around 5 reps. Keep doing this in increments of 20 to 25 kilos increases on each side until we feel like, okay, now when we do this set, it's going to be around 10 to 12 reps of failure. So let's do this warm up set and see how heavy or light it feels. feels medium not light not heavy I think two more warm-ups and then it's time well one more warm-up or two we'll see but then it's time to really get started on the working sets so I'm gonna go with around three to five reps to get a feel for the weight It's 
one more 25 kilo plate and then let's go okay so this is going to be working set number one and for chest i have decided to do the workouts a little bit like i used to do a few years ago when my chest comparatively to the rest of my body was actually a, a stronger muscle group right now it's still strong but not as strong as i want it to be and i noticed that more volume works a lot better for me creating a bigger pump so I will stick to doing one heavy set that's usually around 10 reps, a little lower maybe. But after that, I wanna hit 15 plus rep sets to make sure I get a very good pump in the chest. So let's see how many reps I can do with this first working set, which goes to failure. And after that, lower the weight and do a lot more reps. Anyway, let's get started. One more rep here i know on video it looked quite smooth still but internally i would feel i would use different muscles and uh, that wouldn't work well for the fatigue ratio to the stimulus of just a chest you just want to target the chest and not other muscle groups in order to do another rep for example so let's now lower the weight and uh, start with working set number two okay working set number two Reduce the weight by 30 kilos on each side, which is like 20% of the entire weight And that's normally a good amount to reduce the weight with for the next working set. So let's aim for 15 quality reps is a combination of muscular failure but also lactic acid buildup because that tells you you really are limiting or exploiting the muscles glycogen stores and then the muscle will have to do some things like convert lactic acid to energy to keep on going and when that happens you reach true muscular failure and that will cause muscle growth guys okay so now we did two real working sets and really what you want to feel is a good pump so right now i feel tension and the blood pushing against the skin so the chest is filled with blood now it's time for the third working set same weight as before so uh, we're gonna see how many reps we can do doing a little less reps on the third working set compared to the second is no big deal but just go to failure with correct form and you will be fine chest press done and uh, let's go to the next movement this was a converging press and so we got that out of the way and now we can do a press with a barbell for a different tension and a different muscular experience let's go okay Smith machine incline press a 
very small incline, so not very steep at all. But that slight steepness allows you to target the upper chest and limit the front delt uh, stimulus. So we're gonna warm up here again. It's a different movement. Chest is always going to be a little bit of a sensitive muscle group, so don't immediately go to your working set weight. Always warm up one to two sets and then go to the uh, weights you're going to, go, go to fill your with. So let's get started. set to see exactly the position of the bench beneath the bar to see how the path motion of the bar uh, feels for you so right now it was a little bit too high adjusting the seat now it's not an option but when you go too heavy and you then discover oops the form is a little bit off because the bar path is not where you want it to be then it's too late so use the warm-up sets to do things like that last warm-up set so usually when I've done my first movement, I do one to two warm-ups on the next movement, and then I feel okay, I'm getting used to this movement, I know what this movement pattern is, and then I can simply go to heavier weights because the muscle itself is already filled with blood, got a good pump, so that's not going to be the issue. The only issue is getting used to the exact motion of the movement, which is also considered warming up, but not warming up the muscle, but warming up to the movement itself. So let's go. Alrighty guys, time for the working set. So this weight is pretty light. So I'm gonna go slow and contract while really focus on contracting and stretching the chest and uh, maybe go a little higher in reps. But as I said, the pump is what is going to cause my personal muscle growth for the chest. This just goes to show that even with light weights, if you do the correct execution, the muscle doesn't care what weight it is. It will go to failure, but the less the weight can be, you know, the lighter the weight can be, as I always say, the less chance of injury. Okay, we're doing the same weight again, going for 12 to 15 reps, and that's working set number two. And after this, going a bit lighter, a bit faster for an even better pump. Oh. Ah! 
right, the last set guys, I removed 10 kilos from each side. I gotta do this set a little faster, of course still with correct form, but this is to create the ultimate pump. the chest is getting empty so uh, one more pressing movement and then one more fly and then the chest itself is going to be finished the third one is going to be a decline motion press but actually it's going to be the dip. So this is a chest, I mean, this is just an assisted dip machine or a pull-up machine. But what you can do here is adjust the weight in how much it assists your body. And the, also the benefit here is that you can adjust the way that you're doing the dip compared to a free weight dip. You're always pretty much in the same position. And here you can really move your upper body how you want it. So move it to the front to stretch, move it to the back to contract. So let's check it out. already pretty heavy so that was already the first working set here there's no warm-up needed because this press to me I mean this dip doesn't really uh, provide any injury risk or any risk at all so now we're going to do a lighter working set and then after that do the final chest movement second working set and guys this one has an incredible stretch so when I go down the stretch is amazing so what you don't want to do is drop yourself down at all which is what this exercise helps with. It helps you keep your body weight up a little bit, allowing for controlled motion, so you can really go into the stretch, feel whether you're going too far or not, and go back, contract the chest to fill your guys. So uh, let's go. So it's time for the flies. I like to do this quite quickly after finishing the last movement because this simply finishes off the chest. In my opinion, you don't need to lock this one. No progressive overload needed. If you do that for the first few movements, that's perfect for but it's isolation movement. Doesn't really need it. So let's just go to failure and finish it off with a very good pump. Ah! 
a bit heavier because this last one was like 30 reps. Let's try to keep it around 20 and go to failure. Up. Now it's time for the side delts because the chest is finished. So we're gonna grab a light dumbbell and actually do the incline side level raise because then you don't have to use as much weight as with this one. And it provides more tension even here because like this, the tension is still very strong. So let's do it. kilos is enough to go to failure below 20 reps if you do this one correctly second set Needed, at least for me, for side delts. All right, the last muscle group is going to be the tricep. So we're going to start it with an isolation movement, usually either the rope or the bar. And this time we're going to use this try-on bar, which feels amazing. Very nice grip, which is available, of course, here in the gym. Now we're going to do it as an isolation movement, as I said, to warm up the triceps and to prepare the triceps for heavier overhead movements later.
biceps, it's very important to do, well, at least in my opinion, higher volume per set. So this was like 12, 13 reps. The next one is going to be at least 15 reps to make sure you get a lot of blood in the muscle. It's a smaller muscle group, so going heavy doesn't really make a lot of sense. So going lighter, getting a pump, getting a good mind-muscle connection is what it's all about here. So the rest in between these sets, even though they're working sets, it's a lot shorter than the compound movement. So I'll around a minute and you should be ready to go to the next set already. Let's go. the weight every time I do a working set because then I'm still able to do around 15 reps with good form and increase the amount of the blood inside the muscle. overhead movement to really stretch out the pump triceps for a maximum effect of muscle growth. All right, so after an isolation uh, movement, a press, an isolation press like that, a push down, it's time for an overhead extension. And you can do this with both arms or one arm at a time if there's a difference in strength or size between the arms. So I'm going to do it unilaterally now. Uh, a rope overhead extension, starting with the left, also gives more freedom of motion, allowing for less bad tension to come to the, uh, the tendons and the joints, and more positive tension on the tricep itself. here is when you stretch the tricep you feel the stretch on the bottom of the tricep which is exactly what you want in this movement
again. This warming set was lighter than the first. We're gonna repeat this one more time and then we're done. Okay guys, last set of the day. Okay guys, that was the chest, side delt and tricep workout. And of course, we had our intro workout already, which is very important, but right now, we're not gonna go home and prepare our post-workout meal. Let's go. Okay guys, we are in the kitchen now at my place. We've been living here for like three, four months since February this year. We're loving this kitchen, a lot more space than before in the apartment, eight floors high. That was a smaller kitchen, still was a nice kitchen, but in here we can do a lot more. So let's create the post-workout meal and the main ingredient will be rice. So let's take out some rice first. And it's going to be Yes, regular white rice. So this is actually parboiled rice. And we're going to put that rice right in here. All right, so what you want to do, you can do this with a rice cooker as well, by the way. Crock-Pot is simply a rice cooker and it can do a lot more stuff, but more about that in a future video. So the post rocket meal will contain 180 grams of rice. So let's put it in. And now guys, the secret you've all been waiting for. How do you make the golden rice? This is a secret ingredient. All you have to do, and this by the way is turmeric, so turmeric powder. All you have to do is this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's all you need to create that golden shine. And by the way, the flavor of this is minimal, but it still adds like an Indian spice. So, and it's healthy as well, so it doesn't hurt at all. Now we're going to add a low salt. This is regular salt, but replaced with two thirds of iodine. And uh, well, not, not just iodine, mostly potassium with extra iodine. So we're gonna put this in here because we want to balance the salt and the iodine and potassium concentration. And now we have some regular Himalayan salt. I'm gonna put some in here as well. It might seem like quite a lot, but if you're a 130 kilo bodybuilder who has been training, who has been sweating and drinking a lot, you actually need quite a lot of salt to balance it out. And now a very interesting part, so, we need to put some water in here. How much water do you use per gram of rice? So we put in 180 grams of rice. I like to put two times as much water in there as the rice. And then the result will always be golden. So we right here have a cooker. And that means the water that comes out of here is cooked immediately, which uh, does make a sound. So be with me right now. Okay, so it has said two times the amount of water as the rice. So you can measure it out here. That's 360 mils. Just like that. And that's pretty much all you have to do. And then you put this back in the crock pot, right here. And then you mix it up. 
Make sure that everything is nicely balanced out. And then put on the lid. Obviously turn it on, put in the plug. So what this does is you push the rice and then 12 minutes is the standard to start it. And now it starts to heat up. And this allows uh, the steam to be building up inside, which literally pushes the water inside the rice. So within 10 minutes, basically 10 minutes, it's going to be done. But since it's already cooking water in there, it's gonna heat up really quickly. So in the meantime, you can work on the other sources, the protein source and the vegetables. So let's get started on that. You grab a plate, and I honestly, I love these plates. It's not literally, it's not really a plate, it's more of a, you know, a bowl, a bowl plate combination because we like to eat everything with a spoon. And if you have a flat plate, you can't really get all the uh, rice grains off of it. So now we're gonna go to the freezer right here. And this is something very simple, guys. All you wanna do, and this is a tip, if you can do this at your local grocery store or whole foods store. So this is basically frozen chicken chicken breasts so I just take one and then two so this is about 200 grams of cooked chicken and there is about 23.4 grams of protein per 100 grams which means this is about or close to 50 grams of protein since it's already cooked it contains a high amount of protein and then we're going to do something else. So normally, this is frozen, right? So you actually want this to be thawed out before. But we have a steam oven here. So you can either steam this in a microwave with a special container, or you can use, if you have it at home, a steaming oven, which makes it a lot more tasty and healthy, actually. So you just put some water in here. And you put this back. So this basically evaporates the water, creates a steam inside. And why am I using this, this particular steamer? Literally, the chicken will become very, very tender. So we just put regenerate. That means you rege regenerate what it used to be before it was frozen, which makes it perfect. You just start it up, and then in about 10 minutes, that's gonna be done. Then the rest is gonna be done. And in the meantime, we can do the vegetables. So the vegetables usually quite easy. We can simply use a cucumber. So after the workout, you want to have some very easy vegetables to digest. So all you need to do is cut up the cucumber itself. So I like to take about, you know, maybe a little smaller than half of this and cut it into a little cubes. So just like this. And don't forget guys, always wash the outside. Always wash it, because maybe you can see. But if we actually wash this off, you can kind of sometimes see that it's a little color on here. So a little bit of dirt, a little bit of sediment from whatever was on there is now gone. We just put this back in the, uh, in the fridge. And then we're gonna cut up that cucumber. So this is a very easy choice, guys. You don't have to cook it. You don't have to do anything with it. Just cut it up into stripes like this. Just like that. And it doesn't take any effort at all. So normally you can go for very difficult or complicated to prepare vegetables. But right here, we just make it very easy and just cut it up into very little cube cubes. I know this is not the master chef way of cutting, but hey, it works. So right here, you have all the cubes. And basically, now all you have to do is wait for the rice to be done, for the chicken to be steamed, and this, and we are ready. So let's check out the final result. Alrighty, so right now everything is done. The rice is done, the chicken is done, and the vegetables were already done. So let's open up the 
steam oven. So what happens in a steam oven is that, of course, this plate is incredibly hot and there is some water coming from the plate, uh, coming from the chicken. So the first thing you actually want to do, remove this excess water, which you do not need. So that's the first thing we're going to remove here. All right. So as you can see, this chicken it is very tender. You can see it already just by me moving it around. It's not uh, dry at all because you steamed it. That's the big benefit. So now we are going to add the rice. So let's take this out. You know, with a crock pot, you always have some water right here. And now we are going to take out the rice. And as you can see, guys, a very popular color, the golden rice, as you can see right here. And you can see at the bottom, it's already sliding out. I didn't add any oil at all. This is the benefit of our crock pot. It's perfectly cooked and doesn't stick. And it's soaked up all the water very nicely. And sometimes, you, if I, if I check it out now, I could have maybe added 20, 30 mils of less water. So depending on the amount and the type of rice that you use, you can use a little less water. And um, honestly, when I'm cutting, I add a lot more water because then you want more volume. So now all you need to do is very quickly wipe off this turmeric because trust me guys, if you get turmeric into something, it's never gonna come out. Now, add the cucumber to the meal. And then what we have right here is a perfect bodybuilding friendly meal. So all you need to do now is cut up this chicken very nicely. Yeah, that's pretty much it guys. So this meal contains 180 grams of rice. And look at that, look at that chicken. It's just spreading apart very nicely. You can see how tender it is. So yeah, we're going to enjoy this meal. And it was a chest day. So when I'm training legs or back, what I'm also doing is add another banana to it for extra carb, but today it is not needed. And now uh, we're going to enjoy this meal. And this is actually meal number uh, two of the day. I'm gonna have five meals today. So I moved from six to five meals, adding a little more carbs in each meal. But yeah, this is what I like to eat post-workout now. And um, I'm almost at the end of the bulking season. So what I wanna do is thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to check out VintageGenetics.com for this tank top these shorts and a lot more classic bodybuilding clothing and don't forget to stay golden. <laughs>